There's quite a few shots like this later in the video, so make sure to stick around and watch the whole thing. Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're going to go out into the shop in just a minute and uh, TIG weld some socket welds in 1 inch Schedule 40 carbon steel pipe. Now, this is going to be a chin up bar when I'm done. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to have air, steam, or water, or anything like that running through it. But I'm going to weld it. I'm going to talk about B311 code, or B31.1 code, or B31.3. There's a bunch of B31 codes for power piping and for general construction, and et cetera, et cetera. And they all differ a little bit, but they're all very similar. So, um, one thing, when it comes to welding socket welds, uh, the gap. Now, if they're welded without a gap, that's bad. And the reason is, there's nowhere for the shrink to go. That there's nowhere for the metal to expand. And, and uh, when this is engaged, the socket welds has a, a socket weld fittings have a, a, milled, a milled recessed area. And if you just butt the, the fitting all the way up against there and weld it, as that thing expands and as your weld metal shrinks, it leaves a lot of stress in there and it can crack the root pass and if, even if it doesn't crack it initially upon welding it, it'll crack in service if, uh, when it's exposed to vibrations and thermal cycling and all that. So leaving a gap in a socket weld is probably the, the number one necessary thing. Now the code calls for approximately 1 16th gap before welding. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the shop. And I'm going to fit this stuff up. I don't have a rigid uh, a tripod pipe vise, but I do have a strong hand table. So now it's time for me to stop talking and let's go out to the shop and weld these things up. These little V blocks here are coming really handy for working with pipe and other round stuff. All right, They're, they fit in these indexed holes that are precision drilled and at right angles. And they fit in there, they pop in there with a little O-ring so they don't, they don't wiggle around. And that's what I'm going to use today to put the pipe in, just like if this was a rigid pipe vise. And I'll be able to spin it and get everything level and true like it needs to be. I've got two of them. And I'm going to clamp it down. The little clamp here that pops right in the hole, one-handed operation like that. It's got a little V-pad on there with magnets on it. For this, for, for this particular operation, I don't really need magnets, but they're not going to hurt anything. And you can see I'm doing this with one hand. I'm actually holding the camera with the other. And that, that is really handy because I work by myself most of the time. I don't have anybody to hold stuff for me while I clamp it down. So being able to clamp things with one hand, huge plus. So I'm going to just stick the end of the pipe out here just like this. You see I've cleaned it, ready, get it ready for welding. I got the mill scale off of it because I'm going to TIG weld these. That is really important. I'm going to put the fitting on just like this. And I'm going to show you now how the gap works. Again, the B31.1, ASME B31.1 calls for approximately 1 16th gap. And you see if I mark it and then just let the fitting rock like that, that's pretty close, about a 332nd probably. And I'll get a tack on that. And then I'll straighten it up just using another piece of pipe that I'm going to weld in there later after this weld's done. Put the piece of pipe in there and use it for a, a little lever tool. And I can get some I can get some push on that thing and get it straight. And I can either use a level, a little torpedo level, or a straight edge and measure against the pipe. In this case, since the table is so level, I'm just using the torpedo level to get the fitting level. It takes a couple of tries. You could also just bump it with a mallet or a hammer to get it right. But uh, then it kind of messes things up sometimes if you've got a fitting on the other end. So now that I've got that level, I'm just spinning it over 180. And I've got to eyeball it this way and get it level because it's just a chin-up bar. I don't have to get it perfect that way. And normally you can eyeball them that way anyway. They don't they typically are going to be off much. You can always put a straight edge on each side, get them straight. I'm using a lift arc TIG machine today with a, just a torch switch, which means I've actually got to touch off to get the arc going. I prefer high frequency whenever I can, but just playing around with this unit. No foot control, just the amperage set, preset the machine. So once those two tacks are on, then I get a couple more tacks. So a total of four tacks. And you can see I've got my roughly a sixteenth gap inside there. 
So, I know I don't have gloves on here. That's because I'm not going to weld right now. I'm just going to show you kind of the motion of the cup as I walk it up the side. This is what it, this is what I'm going to do when I walk the cup. Just wiggle it, keep a little pressure on it, and just rock it side to side, same each time, and that's going to give me a nice even pattern. That's the benefit of walking the cup. It really does give you a nice even travel speed and even little weave pattern. And I'm using a lay wire technique. I'm using a 332nd filler metal for the uh, for the root pass. I'll list all the details at the end of this video on a separate uh, slide. I'm just kind of wiggling it. Not much side to side motion on the first pass. Just a little bit. Just enough to keep the torch going. Or I can freehand it. See, I've got this one hot already. I'll put a TIG finger on there and freehand it, in which case I won't do any side-to-side -side motion at all, pretty much just forward and back. Or I can just go along at a slow, steady travel speed. Sometimes it's good to freehand. Sometimes it's good to walk the cup. And for the second pass, of course, you need to let it cool a little bit between passes if you just... If you just camp out on one from start to finish, it's going to get a little too hot. It's kind of hard to manage. It's been done before, and by me too, when I'm kind of in a hurry. But it's best to let it cool uh, probably to about 150 degrees or so before you start on the second pass. It'll, it'll run better, and it'll actually have better properties. I'm just putting a little pressure on the rod here, letting it take it as it will, because I want a, a nice full weld. Now for B31.1, which is the ASME, ASME code for, for power piping, that might not be enough weld right there. They've had a lot of problems with insufficient throat and failures in service. So, But for, for a chin-up bar, it's enough weld. And you see the gap kind of shrunk a little bit, probably shrunk at least a 32nd with doing those two passes. Heavy wall joints sometimes shrink. You know, if you're doing schedule 120 or something like that with several passes, sometimes it'll shrink up a full 1 16th gap. Alright, to get the other fitting on there, I need to level this one up first. And actually, I could have set this whole thing horizontal on this uh, Stronghand Build Pro table and use those V-blocks and fit the whole thing up, tacked it all up all at once. And that would have, it would have been true at 90 and, and right and everything. But, you know, I'm just doing it this way because this is the way somebody would do it with a pipe vise and because if the piece was uh, a lot longer than the table, then, you know, this might be the way that you do it anyway. But table is just uh, capable of all kinds of time-saving things. So anyway, I've got the other one locked down and I need to get this one level sideways like this also and get a tack on it. About a 3 16th to a quarter inch long tack. Then the same operation, getting that thing level and square and then weld it out and then I'll put these riser pieces in here and I'm gonna get the first tack on there I've kinda got it hooked around an arm to cock it to one side while I get the first tack on there and then I'll straighten it up using a torpedo level and a square I know that the horizontal members level because the table is has been leveled and I checked it before I started, but you can also check the squareness this way by measuring with a frame and square. And also if you're doing this really long pieces and they're laying horizontal, this is the only way to check for squareness, just using a square like this. Again, I could have laid the whole thing and clamped it and fit it up all at once and tacked it, but just opted to do this way. I'm going to get a tack here. You see how the bubble is a little bit riding to the left there on the, on the line? Just to show you how much one little 3 16th long tack will pull. I tacked it on the same side as the level, and you can watch the level move as the tack shrinks and cools. Moves right to dead center right there. So you kind of got to, if you want to get things really right, you kind of got to compensate for your tack welds because they are going to pull a little bit. So the first pass on these joints looks something like this with walking the cup. That little thing floating around in there is a little island of silicon. That's, that's normal and typical for using this... Uh, I'm using E70S6 wire, which is a high silicon mild steel rod. 
again, I can uh, I can also use the TIG finger and freehand here like this because that little riser is already hot from welding half of it with walking the cup. But I can walk around it just with minimal movement. About the same end result as walking the cup. And the second pass, freehand, it looks like this. Second pass is definitely harder to make it look as good freehanding uh, as you can walking the cup. No doubt about it. And walking the cup like this too, I can pretty much go all the way around it without stopping and just walking around it. Because I don't have to prop on anything and the, as long as I grab the torch right and it doesn't bump on anything, I can walk around like this the whole, the whole joint start to finish. And that's what you want to do whenever you can, I think anyway. There's varying opinions on uh, how much stress is in a joint if you weld it all the way around start to finish, but I think it's good practice personally. Alright, well, that is it for today. Here's the settings I used. You can pause this right here if you want to look at them. I won't keep it on here too long. And If you want to learn more about that table and the tooling, just go to stronghandtools.com and look up the Build Pro table. Thanks for watching. Visit weldingtipsandtricks.com.